going on, y'all? Father Barbarian here. Hang on, my buddy Matt. DiGirolamo. Because I can't get that right at all. No way in hell. We're sitting around talking about shields because he knows more about building shields than I will ever understand in my life. Matt, how's it going? It's going all right, Paul. How's it going with you? Uh, I haven't killed anybody yet. A sad day. Um, <laughs> so, shields. Yes. We've got all kinds of different shields sitting around. We've got all kinds of different processes. Um, after a couple of things, we're going to talk about materials. How about you go about doing that kind of thing? Um, if you want to build some stuff at home, or just to be informative for the sake of informant, your product scares the shit out of me how pretty it is. <laughs> um, and it's actually tough as man. We're going to look at types of shields. We've got um, strap shields, pavises, we've got all kinds of different scutum, oval shields, teardrop shields, the whole gambit of random shapes and junk. We've got a coffin shield there, there's a fletch in here that I... I like to call it an arrow because it fletches and everything else like that. Shield to shield. We use them. They defend us. It's a good plan to have. Now, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and talk about materials. Though, because why, what I have right now is a complete engineered piece of plywood. How do you feel about using an engineered piece of plywood? So, it's, uh, it's a really good cheap option. Right. So, like, if you're going to be going into, uh, you know, some sort of heavy fighting, uh, whether it's uh, SCA heavy fighting or, you know, HMB, mm -hmm. uh, ACS, ACW, what yeah. have you. All of them. You really want something that is built well and can take a hit, but that you can also replace without breaking the bank. And that's where this sort of plywood comes in extremely well, because it's cheap and it's readily available. And for the money that you pay, you get a surprising amount of defensive capability out of it. Yeah, you can you, you edge it right. You can basically take some serious blows on some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one issue that you end up having is that you can't bend it. You can't make it take a shape in any way because it delaminates. Yep. So, what you then have to do is laminate your own stuff, which is the other kind of material, which I call as a stack or a laminated shield, um, where you've, you've got the whole situation right there behind you. Yeah, I've got, uh, so right here I have an example of what you would call a uh, vaulted birch. You can get this off of woodcraft. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, and you can get, uh, you can get smaller sizes than this, but you can get them down to about say, 12 inches by 18 inches, you can get a very nice wood core for a, a, a melee-worthy shield out of doing your own lamination. The, uh, the, the cool thing about like the, like the Home Depot-type plywood mm -hmm. is that it, it follows a similar technique to what you would be doing by doing this yourself. With this stuff, you have more control over the quality because it bends. And if you go after the bend, or the bendable plywood, you can make a shield that has built-in deflection that the flat stuff doesn't have, while also, uh, you know, reinforcing it further. So when you talk about laminating shields and, and, and stacking up different pieces, you can actually turn them in different directions to make the grain go in different ways to make it stronger, right? Oh, yeah. Using thinner pieces, using a couple of thinner pieces compared to using a really thick flat piece makes it stronger. Mm -hmm. that, kind of, that, that curve makes it extremely strong. Right? 100%, yeah. What we have here, I'm going to knock down half the set right now. <laughs> Explain this. So, uh, this is what I use to in order to press uh, Roman shields. So, for those of you that do not know, I'm affiliated with a Roman reenactment legion called 14th Legion, mm -hmm. and I'm the one of their primary shield suppliers. In order to press the boards to get that, uh, that cylindrical shape that you see that's so iconic for the Roman shield, it's got to sit in a press like this for a week. So, you leave this sit for a week, and it basically just... It, Brings it to brings it to that shape and it actually holds that shape. You got an example of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what it looks like coming out of, coming out of the press after a week. And as you can see, it's got a very nice curve to it. Yeah. And and how and about how long does it hold that curve? If you're if you're fighting, or well, if you're not fighting with it, basically forever. Yeah. If you're beating the hell out of it, it'll still last a good long while. And you'll notice that we don't use large shields like this in the in the boat herd community and the live steel fighting community, primarily because they just turn into. Like steering wheels, you can rip them out of your hands, you drop them, do all kinds of stuff. Everything that we've got here, these are actually more cut out for doing steel fighting. They can make them a little bit tougher because they're not nearly as big. Over a larger space of area, of physics just lets it snap a little bit easier because it doesn't have like this amount of area that makes it weaker over a certain uh, certain period. But they're also strong for what they are. So then we get we get to that point. You have you have a press, you have a blank. What kind of materials do you sh like? You throw on it and everything else like that. So what's great about this is that it's it's pretty universal what you can face a shield with. This is a uh, seven ounce heavyweight canvas type linen. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also use uh, cotton duck cloth canvas if you're uh, if you're fighting. Yeah. Most people do two layers. 
And that soaked in glue is usually enough to make it hard as a rock. So the, uh, the cool thing also, and you don't see this as much just because of how expensive it is, mm -hmm. but goat raw hot is really amazing. So this stuff is about as thick as a, roughly about a postcard. It's got incredible tensile strength. You can uh, you can take a hit with it extremely well, mm -hmm. and if you layer up, so say like canvas rawhide canvas, mm -hmm. you can take a relatively thin shield core yeah. and get the the sort of defense capabilities out of a wood core that's twice its size. You're you're saying that your uh, that your facing materials and everything else like that um, goes in towards making more strength. It's not just there for the looks and everything. Completely, like yes. You get you you put you you put the face on it. You edge it. You you paint you, you paint whatever else on it. What does your end product look like? So the end product, for what I do, ends up looking like looking like this right here. So this is a completed Roman legionary shield. Uh, there is a there is a, a an ex an excavation from the third yeah, century. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That thing doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, it's about 12 pounds. There's an excavation from the 3rd century, and it's designed to mimic uh, the weight of the original find. Hmm. So, like, the uh, that is light as a feather, but that's about the weight of what the originals would have been. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. Like, they, you, you'd, you'd imagine the thing would be a lot heavier, but over the, like with the curve and everything else like that and all the edging that you put into it, I figure that it's strong as shit. Mm -hmm. um, that center boss... You've got you've got another one sitting right here. Um, that's actually that's actually well situated and everything else like that. Where'd you catch that? At? So I got this from it's a, a vendor in India called Habibi Armory. Gotcha. They make shield bosses. They also do uh, they do chain mail for us, but their their shield bosses are absolutely incredible. Nice because they can do uh, eighteen gauge all the way down to twelve. So I'm gonna take a hot minute real quick, uh, Matt. You can ignore me for a hot second. Just shilling a little bit. So we're talking about shields. We got all kinds of shields and everything else like that. I'm currently in the process of doing a shield giveaway, and I'm building several shields. Um, I'm going to give one away December 12th. The only way that you're able to be in the contest to win the shield is to subscribe. You have to hit that subscribe button. Why won't you? It saddens me. Please. So now we go into like now we're going to we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Bowhurt. Uh, shields and everything else like that. I really do love that shield. I might get you to make me one for my hand fun because that looks dope. Sure. Um, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk a little bit more about both our shields. We've got this kind of situation here, where it goes on your arm. And you strap it onto your arm. I don't like having just a, a bare open strap. Like I don't like having this. I want to have a buckle here that I can tighten it down to my armor and actually make it so it can't spin around. Right. And you can't have metal handles. It has to be a leather handle. Ignore this one. It's really, it was made before the time. Your placement, you notice how there's space above where my knuckles end, right? That's actually to transform more, transfer more force into a punch. When I'm punching people, I don't want my fist deaded here. I want it shoving that edge right into their face kind of thing. Um, I also have it shaped in such a way that it knocks a motherfucker out. You know that you want to knock somebody out. It's the game plan. When that front end will get the crap beat out of it. We edge this completely the same way that you would. We, we put we put the rawhide, we put the leather, we do the whole situation. We make it pretty. But you need to make sure that you protect this edge because it will turn into powder, right? So what I do, I take a piece of metal, I roll it over the edge. And I actually engineer this so it can actually take more blows and be a lot more hard hitting. You have to then cover this over with leather, rawhide, Everything else, you can't have this be bare um, because they get all angry about it. I usually use aluminum. This is stainless steel because I'm a malcontent. Uh, that's what I had sitting around, but I usually use aluminum because it's lighter. Most shields weigh, you say a butter shield weigh about what, five pounds? About five, eight pounds. Yeah. If that. Does that really affect you in a fight? Not really. No. So when I go to fight with a with a, a shield and an axe or something, a sword or whatever the hell, um, it's bang, 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 bang. It's the, Rus it's the Russian... Um, Oh, battery or whatever it is. Where they just hit you once in the face, hit you with the sword, hit you again in the face with a shield. You can knock people out with that. You want to make them a little bit smaller so they can't turn into a steering wheel on you. You don't want somebody to be able to, you don't want to be hooked onto things. You want to make them smooth edged. Um, don't have a lot of corners to them and everything else like that, or corners that are swept back in such a way that they don't catch on. I'm probably going to have you on again. We're going to do more shields, um, and I'm probably going to have you like tutor me in making a better shield. Uh, sure. For the giveaway, and we're also going to figure out what the hell we're going to paint on it. We might paint a T Rex on it. I dig it. I, I like a T Rex. I'm about it. Um, Matt, I want to thank you. You have a shop, right? Yeah, I do. Um, 
the ancient armory? Mm -hmm. Where the, where's that at? So the ancient armory, I am based out of uh, Reisterstown, Maryland. Dope. Even though my specialty is Roman shields, I do shields of all hobbies and all eras. I have made uh, I've made shields for reenactment. Mm -hmm. I've made shields for Bohurt. I've made shields for like uh, Eastern and Western style reenactment yeah. fighting. Gotcha. So it's like it, it, if you want it, I can make it. Where where can I find the link for the ancient armor? Well, you're gonna have a link in the description below for yeah. one. Uh, for two, are you on Instagram, Facebook? My Instagram and Facebook are my primary channels. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm probably gonna have him make me a shield for singles fighting. That's actually probably a better idea. Uh, sword and buckler fighting and sword and shield fighting because that sounds like really fun. We can yeah, make really right. we can make stupid light ones that can deal with uh, single handed sabers. It seems like a good play. Um, I want to thank everybody for checking in, hanging out. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Check me out on the Facebook, the Instagram. Uh, get that little bell icon. It tells you when I put stuff out. T-shirts, description in the below. You guys got it. I love you all. Stay safe. Get hungry. Get out.